Hello and welcome to today's XRP crypto show where we try and bring you the news without the hype. If that's something you're interested in, then please subscribe to the channel. I thought I would start this video with explaining why I am so interested in XRP. Other than the fundamentals of this company seems to be uh, amazing in terms of their partnerships, amazing in terms of their connections, their partnerships with central, central banks and banks around the world. What this technology can do, aside from the fact that we have David Schwartz, who's arguably one of the best, if not the best, cryptographer on planet Earth. There are so many things going for this company, but one of the things that always strikes me the most with Ripple and XRP is just how much the media do not like it. And I think depending on your worldview, uh, whether the bankers run the world or the global elites run the world, whoever runs the world, they certainly have a, a large investment in media companies and a large sway in what media companies say. And you never ever hear them say anything good about Ripple and XRP. And then you've got that famous video with, I forget the guy's name, sitting beside Gary Gensler on stage, saying you can almost hear the terrified bankers screaming right now as this technology comes out, um, because it is very powerful technology. That's what has fascinated me so much with Ripple and XRP, is just how much the mainstream media do not like it. How much, whenever they talk about it, it would generally only be bad, uh, they never like to say good things about it, and they always bring in somebody who's going to have a view of, oh, well, they're not doing things right, and what's wrong with the company, and how Ripple, the company, own half of the token supply, and they will never talk good things about it. They'll always drag out someone like Pomp, who will then talk Bitcoin, and they'll sit and say, we just don't understand XRP. We don't understand what it's doing. I think they understand exactly what XRP is doing, and that's what fascinates me so much about Ripple, the company, and XRP, because I think they perceive it as the biggest threat out there. And I think if they perceived Bitcoin as the biggest threat out there and Ethereum as the biggest threat out there, then they would talk bad about those as well, but they only generally say good things about Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think Bitcoin will do very well. I think Ethereum, the powerful people that who are out there wanted everything to run on the Ethereum network, and Ripple is certainly the big contender for that. And time, time will tell how that plays out. Uh, I'm siding with XRP on this one because everything I just said, other than the fact that the fundamentals show that this company has made amazing moves over the last decade plus, um, plus the dream team that they have with them. You've got ex-CEOs of so many of the top companies, Rosie Rios, uh, David Schwartz, just he is, his brain um, always amazes me whenever I hear speeches about David Schwartz. And this is the thing about David Schwartz is you'll have a room of really technologically advanced people who really, really understand blockchain technology and they'll be firing him question after question. And he always just has a great way of simplifying the answer and the solution. And it often just leaves people a bit speechless of, yeah, wow, okay, cool, that's, that's the answer we were looking for. And you don't often hear people challenging him going, well, actually, I think you're wrong on that and I think you're wrong on that. He generally makes them see his point of view and they seem to agree with his point of view and yeah he's just a very very clever man a very impressive brain on that human being so let's see what we have today japan has 17 million unemployed university graduates in their 30s and 40s living with their parents and facing certain old age poverty how did this happen japan has been in like so many countries around the world have been hit we're going to talk about something a bit later about another country and inflation but japan since 2008 and arguably well before has never never recovered from the uh, recession and it's such a shame that you have such a beautiful country and there's just so much news coming out about japan and the struggles that they are having at the moment and it just goes back into what i try and push out on this state on on this <clears throat> not stage on this channel that the world is changing so much at the moment. And if you listen to any of the top wealth guru, mentors, Robert Kiyosaki, Harry Dent, 
Warren Buffett, they will always say when the markets, when the world is volatile, when geopolitics are up in the air, when there is mistrust between companies and generally when the money supply is not doing well, that's when genera generational wealth can be made. When times are easy, when times are soft, markets don't move much either way. Um, so during these times that we are in now, people will make lots of money and they will lose lots of money. And that is why I think crypto is a good place to be. And AI is also probably a good place to be at the moment. Blockchain backer. Blockchain backer always has evidence behind what he says. So I like blockchain backer because he doesn't just say stuff for the sake of saying stuff. He will literally do a video and go, this is my reasoning behind why I'm saying this. He says, breaking the hold for XRP and altcoins, Bitcoin dominance, safety play turns as market dynamics shift. So people are always looking at the Bitcoin dominance and the Bitcoin dominance is on the move. Again, during these times, uh, markets are more volatile and we should, the majority of analysts believe we are at that point in time where we are due a crypto bull run. Uh, it's what the charts seem to show. We are in just we are in that time frame. You have crypto winter, and then you have the bull runs, and we should uh, hypothetically be in that bull run now. Okay, I thought this was interesting, whether or not it's true or not. By Watch a Guru, FTX's Sam Bankman-Fried requests depression medicine in jail. I'm not surprised because there's a very strong chance he's going to be in jail for a very, very long time. And bear in mind, this guy has been living the high life for a very long time. And he's been rubbing shoulders with the powerful elite of this world and has deep connections with these people. Um, I'm not surprised he's not very happy at the moment, but I kind of think jail's not supposed to be the great place. Uh, you know, I do feel for him because I'm just one of those people that, yes, he messed up and he did some bad things, but he's a human being and I never like to see human beings suffering, even if I don't agree with what they've done. Yes, I do believe in the criminal system and, yeah, I do think uh, he should be in prison, but I, I do feel sad that whenever you see a soul in pain because, yeah, it's, it's bad times, bad times for him. Um, but, yeah, I mean... There's a lot of people that he hurt, a lot of people that have lost everything in their lives. So the uh, the price must be paid. Okay, Jack the Rippler, boom. <clears throat> there's this video that's going around. I'm not going to play it because it's talking about there's three men in a room and they're saying that XRP is going to go to $50,000 and how their previous models were showing it was going to go to $25,000. But because of their connections with groups like the central banks, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's going to go to $50,000. I include this because it seems to be doing the rounds at the moment. I have no belief it will go to $50,000. And yeah, I think let's just focus on getting above $1 or uh, getting to all-time highs. Okay, David Schwartz, the man. So this is where David Schwartz is talking about Codius. I'm still trying to revive it. The technological pieces we were missing exist now, and I think there are some demonstrated market needs that it can address. I wish I could say more, but this is probably more than I should be sharing. So what I love about David Schwartz is he sometimes just can't help himself but to give little pieces of information out to the community that maybe he shouldn't be giving out. And people thought Codius was dead, but it seems like it's not going to be dead. It seems like they didn't have the tech, sort of the technology or hadn't worked it out, uh, sort of how to fix it, but now they have. And Codius and XRP would be a match made in heaven. So, as David Schwartz said, Codius has been fixed. This is a smart contract platform with integrated payment processing. XRP and Codius could be used to manage the quadrillion derivatives market or some of the derivatives market. Huge amounts of money that these companies are trying to target. I mean, they are literally trying to target the market supply of the world. Going back to my very first statement, why the mainstream media never like to say anything good about 
Ripple, the company, and XRP, and why they always drag out the, the usual suspects whenever they need someone to bring out the narrative of why Bitcoin's the best, and let's bring Pomp onto the show, and let's put Jay Clayton out and not ask him any tough questions as to why he initially bought the lawsuit against Ripple. Uh, we live in a crazy world, but uh, I'm losing my thoughts. That's why I'm I'm interested so much in Ripple, the company, because there is all the money in the world up for grabs at the moment in terms of how is it going to be moved around the world. And all the, I mean, you can only imagine the power plays that are happening behind the scenes at the moment. This is the biggest deal that we will ever see, I think in our lifetimes. How often does the entire world's financial supply and how money is moved around the world, how often does that get changed? And we have all of our favorite globalists on TV all the time saying, we are entering the new industrial revolution and all of these type of things. They're saying, we are entering a new financial system. We are going to overhaul the old system. We're not gonna use a 40 year antiquated Swiss system that has a 6% error rate. Uh, needs a lot of a lot of people running around to try and work out where that six percent error rate money has gone. It's slow. It's it's just not a good system. Uh, it it's, seems common sense to me that they would overhaul that system at some point. We're at that point in time now. Why does no one want to talk about Ripple and XRP? My best bet is because they're the biggest threat out there at the moment, and I think the bankers or a lot of the banks, bankers, politicians were into Ethereum because they hoped that Ethereum would be the one. And Ethereum is amazing. Ethereum does so many things that XRP doesn't, which is why I think Ethereum is great as well. But I think a lot of people hope that Ethereum would do everything as well that Ripple could do, whereas Ripple is just faster, quicker, cheaper uh, than Ethereum is for doing so many jobs. I think they're both going to do amazing things. I think people still have... Uh, an awful lot of questions in regards to Ethereum because obviously the S the XRP community has been involved in a lawsuit for over two years now. Um, and it's been frustrating. It's been frustrating and Judge Torres has ruled that XRP in the secondary market is not a security, which means we are the only cryptocurrency or XRP is the only cryptocurrency that has uh, legal clarity as to its non-security status. But they also said that when they sell to institutions, that can be classified as a security. So people are now looking at Ethereum going, well, hang on a minute. These guys sold so many coins to help the Ethereum network, to help the Ethereum company. Isn't that an initial coin offering? How can come all of these people have made so much money on Ethereum, but they're not getting taken to court? They're not getting dragged through the court. So I think there's many questions that need to be had. And obviously, you're never going to see these questions answered on mainstream media. But I often think it will be a little bit like Sam Bankman Freed, where every time people were crying out that justice needs to be done, it seemed the exact opposite was happening. And the media was saying what a good guy he was. And, you know, oh, he's, he's possibly a little bit dyslexic and we need to give this guy a break. He made a mistake. But ultimately... I think he, Sam Bankman Freed was always destined to go to prison. A lot of people felt at the time maybe he will get out of it. I kind of think Ethereum is in the same boat where these questions will never go away. They'll keep being asked and eventually I think they will be addressed. And I think the Ethereum people are aware of that. These They will need to be addressed. And if, uh, say, Brad Garlinghouse, etc., uh, Chris Larson, is it Chris Larson? Is he in the lawsuit? Yeah. Anyway, whether they have to pay a huge fine for selling securities to investors, to large companies, then quite possibly the Ethereum guys will also uh, have to pay that money. It only seems reasonable, but who am I? I'm speculating, as we often do. Okay, Digital Perspectives Permable. There isn't one other project company in the blockchain DLT space that has the deep relationships and conversations with central banks like Ripple has, not one. And this shows uh, Federal Bank of India is going to use XRP to unlock trillions of dollars. Institutional money is on its way. This was one of the things that fascinated me all the way back in 2017 is the fact that you could see Brad Carlinghouse sitting with 
a was it 50 central bankers from around the world i mean the me- the meetings he has and the people at those meetings or the the meetings he's invited to i mean they're epic they're absolutely huge how often does somebody get 50 central bankers sitting in a room with you i mean that's not that's not somebody who's running a company and that company is not going anywhere that's somebody who obviously has a lot of interest because their product seems to be pretty darn good. Um, it fascinated me from the beginning and I think it was Sam I am that actually initially did used to do XRP videos and used to show that these deep connections with Ripple and banks across the world, central banks and saying, you know, th- these are big things. These are not small things. You don't see Bitcoin sitting with 50 central banks around the world. You don't see Ethereum sitting with 50 central banks. Maybe you do. Maybe I just haven't seen them, but all of these things in my mind kind of haunt my mind a little bit of this is such a an amazing company. Why is the price action not happening? I said on the previous video, that's the one piece I haven't been able to fully work out, get around in my head. I understand when uh, utility is... Uh, much higher then xrp price will be higher etc and i understand we can see the volume that's been traded per day on xrp but my thought always has been all of this evidence that shows that this company is going to do amazing things and that has such amazing promise and deep connections like uh, digital perspectives said with central bankers and how now you have federal bank of india is going to use xrp and i think i've got another uh, a tweet of another central bank that's going to use xrp all these connections, but yet the price doesn't go up. Why are these big players not buying up XRP in huge huge volumes, huge amounts, because they understand where this technology is going? That's the one bit of the puzzle I've never been able to understand, and that is the price action. I just don't get it. I do not understand it. I think about it more than I should, and I just can't get around it, because even if most of the people agreed, okay, look, let's keep the price down and let's all buy up together when the timing is right i.e flip the switch kind of mentality but there's always going to be one or two someone someone that they whispered to someone they went out to dinner with and told them about this amazing thing that just goes out and buys huge amounts some billionaire or multi multi multi-billionaire around the world just buying up billions of xrp i don't understand it so I like this one. Basically, I try and look at the information that people tweet and see whether or not it's true or not. And I try and use people that are pretty good in the community. Alex Cobb, always been pretty good in the community. Fubon, Fubon Bank and Ripple XRP, settlement of tokenized assets. Not to mention Ripple has been tweeting about Hong Kong a lot recently. They do seem to be doing a lot of things in Hong Kong. I still remember when you had the Swell event where people like digital, uh, the Digital Asset Investor and uh, Digital Perspectives and all those people went back in the day. And if you remember Crypto Airy, I think uh, her passport had expired. So she was at the airport ready to go and then realized she couldn't go because her passport was expired. But yeah, all DIA, DAI, etc. a lot of the people decided to do an insiders group and Alex Cobb called them out and said, just because you were invited to swell, you're now going to try and profit from the information that we should all be having for free. And it kicked off really badly. I remember that all like he was doing, he was doing videos going, yeah, you guys have let the XRP community down. You've done this. Uh, I think Digital Perspectives addressed it quite quickly and said, well, hang on a minute. No, no, we're not saying we're actual insiders. And it all got really nasty. But I remember the digital asset investor, he literally didn't say anything. He was just putting videos out, but refusing to acknowledge it for, I think it was over a week. And all the comments in the videos were, we need you to address this. We need you to address this now. And he he finally addressed it. And I think what he did was quite smart. I think he waited for uh, sort of the temperature of the room to drop a little bit, but also allowed himself some time to think about how he uh, would reply to the issue. No one's perfect. I'm I'm not taking sides on that one. I thought just thought it was a little bit of fun personally. Um, It's like the Elon Musk and uh, what's his name Zucker fight. People like a bit of uh, a bit of controversy. 
So, mind the gap. We have a bus in London with a big fat Ripple logo on it, Ripple advertisement on it. Seems like there's a company that's wanting to uh, make sure everyone knows about them. Uh, it's fantastic. Always good to see, always good to see when uh, a company that we are all champion championing is advertising. And I think that is everything we will talk about. There was this one breaking ripple finalizes deal with African nation of Zamunda to create a CBDC of their native currency on the XRP ledger. That's why I included this. It does seem I always I have often been split in my mind 50 50 whether or not CBDCs will work long term or whether populations will push back on this. But so many com com uh, countries rather are pushing forward with their CBDCs and it seems like a race of governments at the moment going, hang on a minute, that country's got one and that country's got one and we need to get ours out as soon as possible to show that we're in the game as well. It seems like they believe that in order to compete in the new world stage, you must be running on a CBDC. I don't think uh, it's a race for let's enslave everybody but I think it could be used for those reasons. I think it's a race for technological inclusiveness in this new world that we are entering. A lot of people are scared of the thought of a new world, but many people will make a lot of money out of this. I uh, I do like to watch the Rich Dad Poor Dad channel, um, and as Robert Kiyosaki and many of his guests will tell you a lot, I think it's Andy Sheckman that goes on his show quite a lot. Again, these guys are just so knowledgeable in what they talk about. And as he said, this this time at the moment in the world is like Christmas for the wealthy. For the wealthy, they know that everything's going to be on sale soon and they are going to make even more money than they have made before. So during these tough times and during the tough health times that we've had over the last few years, as he said, most people got crushed but those who are really financially strong, it was like Christmas. They made so much money. They got to buy everything up for cheap. They got to watch all these companies collapsing and buying them for cents on the dollar. Um, it's a cruel world, but it is the world that we live in. And hopefully, hopefully crypto does what we all hope it does. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think that's everything that I wanted to say today. So like I said on this channel, I try and bring you the crypto information, a little bit of fun. Uh, so I'm not a financial advisor. This is just a channel for fun. Try and bring you the information without the hype um, and try and bring a level head to this channel. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel.